More than 40% of workers over the age of 40 say they have experienced age discrimination at work in the last three years. And in fact, there is a day dedicated to the issue. Tomorrow marks Ageism Awareness Day. And joining us now, we have the Dean of the Mailman School of Public Health at Columbia University, Dr. Linda Freed. She's an expert in aging and ageism. Also with us, longtime venture capitalist Alan Patrickoff. He's the chairman and co-founder of Primetime Partners, which invests in companies serving the aging population. And there are many companies like yours, Alan, that are cropping up because of what I like to call the long runway. I have a list uh, for Forbes and Know Your Value called 50 Over 50, and we celebrate women around the world who are looking at their greatest impact and most money-making and greatest success well after the age of 50. So I'm seeing something different happening here. And it seems on the business front, Mr. Patrickoff, uh, are you seeing a need for a company like yours? Oh, I don't think there's any question. When we started up Primetime three years ago, it was kind of an interesting idea to focus on investing in product services, technologies that served older people. And in the last three years, there probably are a half a dozen or more companies, firms <clears> like <throat> mine that have sprouted up. Plus a lot of the existing firms have all of a sudden started uh, focusing on aging and wellness and uh, recognizing that it's the fastest part of growing part of the population. It's not the millennials. In uh, 10 years, there'll be more people over 60 than there will be under 18. So they, older people are they're, they're lasting longer uh, and they have more money to spend and they've got smarts so they can start companies and they're going to need things that are, uh, they need what everyone needs, but they need specialized products. Uh, and I think, Mika, you're aware also of the need for caregiving, uh, it's big mm -hmm. need and big shortage. Uh, but you have also all kinds of services that are uh, slightly different than what younger people need. So, Doctor, uh, to connect what we were just talking about, there's obviously a lot of discussion about ageism in the national conversation right now because of the age of our mm -hmm. current leaders, the President of the United States, his challenger. Uh, they're both late 70s and older. Uh, how has that impacted how you're finding Americans writ large are talking about the idea of age and ageism? So uh, it strikes me that a lot of the discussion about politicians who are older derives from this issue of ageism that we have a negative lens about aging, particularly in this country, although it's a global phenomenon, at the same time that we have this historic accomplishment that because of our societal investments, we've added 30 years to human life. And we're only now realizing through science that this accomplishment has is unveiling uh, an extra 30 years of life in which people have immense capabilities. Um, people do not lose their, the assets that they've accrued over their lifetime, their expertise, their experience, and actually their ability to use those in novel situations that uh, leave them better prepared to pr problem solve in ways that often younger people don't have the background to be able to do. So the gap here is between what the evidence says we actually mature into as we get older and our fears and quite frankly myths about what aging means because it's scary for many people. Uh, stronger, wiser, better is uh, the terms that we use at 50 over 50. I wish we had much more time to talk about this. Dean of the Mailman School of Public Health at Columbia University, Dr. Linda Freed, and venture capitalist Alan Patrickoff. Thank you both very much. We'll have to have you back on this. We appreciate it. And